Okay, guys, here's the second video. I'm gonna go through it step by step. Let me share my screen and we'll get after it. All right. I gotta hide this little, there it goes. Okay, so we're gonna start out and what do we do? We check it, see what's going on. Click this, no light, but what am I gonna look for? Right down here, see that relay? I'm gonna listen. In a, in a control panel, a lot of times you can listen, but, you know, there may be a bad contact or whatever, but we, the, the, the relay is turning on. So what it tells me is I'm getting power all the way down to two, but from this point out, who knows? So I'm going to focus in this area since I, I know my relay is turning on. Doesn't mean the relay is not bad. You can have a bad contact, so you got to keep that in mind. All right. So let's go ahead and let's get a meter. Let's get our schematic diagram, which I like to use it. It's a lot easier to follow for me. Okay. All right. And we're going to check power. Let's check it to ground again. Oops. All right. And then, of course, we know going in, we're getting 115 volts. All right. Let's check, so we know we're getting power to this point right here, right? So how come the lights? So the, the lights coming off of the R1 relay, terminal six, let's check it and see if we're getting power to the lights. All right, so it is terminal six, put it right there. All right, on, on, off. All right, turn it on, nothing. So let's go back to the other side, which is number eight. All right, number eight is good, right? But coming out is no good. So what do you think the problem is? Me, I think it's that contact right here, okay? One way to find out is let's go ahead and let's shut it down. Block out, verify. Okay, now let's take it and we're going to disconnect number eight and number six. And we're going to get a meter and we're going to put it on resistance. And we're just going to check across that contact. Actually, we can't. I can't fire that relay. All right. Um, I don't know if we can, if it's going to, let's try this. It may fuss at me for having it disconnected, but I'm going to try. And then we put it on resistance. And since it's disconnected from the circuit, uh, it won't let me. Okay, never mind. All right, to me, all right, let's just stop there and we'll go back to lockout. All right, and I'm thinking that contact's bad, and I don't know any other way to check it other than to force that contact close, right? So a lot of times you can actually take it, disconnect your wiring, all right, then put a meter across it and check that resistance. But we're going to say it's bad. All right, let's connect everything back up. All right, we know our fuses were good and all that good stuff. So let's see what happens. Well, that was it. Okay, so we had a bad contact. Like I said, I don't know how else to check it other than being able to to do it live. And you can you can do it live as long as you don't have anything connected to it. And the only thing is that wire is hot, so I guess you'd have to take that whole wire out that whole wire out to check it. Anyway, all right. So let's go ahead and exit fault. And and I was unsuccessful because I had a safety error because they didn't like the way I tested, which I don't think is really that bad. All right. But of course, you know not to check hot with a hot on a circuit with resistance. 
If you don't have it connected, you can test it. Anyway, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more. We'll do one more right now, how about that? Because that was short. All right, let's take a look at this one. All right, the lights are staying on. The on buttons that's supposed to turn them on and they're supposed to stay off, all right? So let's look at it, wrong button, our schematic. So I can turn it off with my stops. That means I've got, I feel like I have a short across this section of my circuit. It could be PB1, PB2, PB3, or R1 contact, one three contact, all right? One of those is holding in and it'll only turn off when you hit the off button, okay? You can see my coil is lit up. <coughs> All right, so to me, the easiest way, there's, you know, if you check power, you're gonna have power across them all, okay? And if you got one shorted and it's not working at all, there's no use, there's no use in, um, checking power. So we're gonna go ahead and just lock it out. All right, get our meter and what are we gonna do? Check resistance because we're gonna check across these start buttons and it's either one of the start buttons or that relay between one and three, between one and three here. So let's get our screwdriver. I'm gonna pop these off real quick because we know we got to go through them. Ah, don't matter. One to three, right? One to three. All right, so we can jump through there pretty quick. So I'm gonna check from here to here. All right, if it's open, it's OL. If it's closed, it's zero. All right, go to the next one. Open and closed, that's working right. All right, that one's working right. Now to me, I bet this one is zero between one and three. Yep, look at that. Between one and three, it's zero, but it's supposed to be a normally open, which means it's showing closed when it should be open. So the contact's bad, contact short. All right, let's do this. That's wrench, place that bad boy, screwdriver. That it should be lock. Bam, lights are off. That's it. Notice I check every one of them at the beginning and at the end to make sure. All right, exit fault, successful. Show details, bam, look at that bonus way over there. Okay, that's where y'all should be. All right. So take those, I did one earlier, take those two, just kind of watch them. You're probably gonna see those circuits, but take your time. Now there's gonna be one that's it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a wire somewhere and you just gotta find it, okay? All right, well, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna send out an email and text and all that good stuff, let you know, and just watch it and spend some time in it, okay?